Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you happen to be in the world. My name is Carmen Mazera, and I serve as Executive Director of AXIA, the Association of Professional Schools of International Affairs, to which all of your graduate institutions belong. We are so delighted to welcome you here today to another in our ongoing career webinar series for our graduate students. This one looking at the tremendous opportunities at the World Bank, particularly the Young Professionals Program. We'll have a speaker from the bank join us and then two current young professionals, including uh, some students who've been exactly where you are at APSIA institutions. And so we're gonna hear from them and let you also have a chance to ask your questions directly. So please do think about what you want to ask about because this is such a great opportunity for you to really draw out information that's of use to you. With that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Mabel from the bank to share some more information. But as we go, if you do have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll do our best to take those at the end. If you have any technical issues, please feel free to send me a direct message and we'll do our best to take care of you that way. And with that, Mabel, please, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, um, good morning, everyone. Morning from Washington, D.C., where we are based. Uh, and I'm sure you're all dialing in from different places, but good morning, the weather is great. It's not so sunny, as you can see from outside my window, uh, but happy to be with you today. And very quickly, I'm just gonna introduce myself and then I'm gonna hand over to my colleague, BM, to also introduce himself before we dive in into the presentation. And then as Carmen also explained, we have BM here to just talk to you about his YP experience and then you'll be free to ask him questions as well. How, his, how the journey has been for him and how what, what working at, at the bank has uh, basically been like. Um, very quickly, my name is Mabel Udor. I'm the talent attraction manager here at the bank. I'm based here in DC. I joined the bank about four and a half years ago, to be precise. I started here at the bank January the 3rd, 2019. Uh, but this is a new role for me, which I started January this year. But prior to that, my first four years at the bank was spent at IFC. I'm sure you know IFC, which is one of the institutions under the World Bank Group as the program lead for recruitment. So I worked in IFC for four years before I joined the bank as the recruitment manager. But prior to that, I worked in the private sector um, in general, with General Electric in the UK and in Switzerland, respectively. So that's all about me. It's been a privilege to be part of the World Bank Group. So I would just hand over to my colleague, PM, to introduce himself before we go right in. PM, over to you. Thank you, Mabel. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Byung Min. You can call me BM. I'm Korean, and I joined IFC last September through the YP program. Before joining, I uh, completed my MBA in Cal Northwestern University, and before that, I worked at an expert credit agency in Korea. I am happy to share my experience, and I'm glad to answer to any of, of your questions related to the application or the work. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, BM. So before we start, we always like to start our presentation with this video, which is a video of some of the staff that are based here at the bank and what working at the bank means to them. I'm hoping this would work <laughs> because we tested it and it did, but let's see, hopefully it does one second. Okay, now technology has failed. I guess because I'm, is it because I'm putting it in a slight mode, do you think? Not sure. Hmm. That's strange because it worked a minute ago. Um, okay, let's see. Let's just try one more time and then let's see. I'm gonna just get it out of the mode and let's play it. When we left Bosnia, each of us had one bag with them. I grew up in Palestine. It's a conflict-ridden country, and life uh, has been very difficult. I was about to turn on the faucet to drink some water, and my mother rushed in and said, don't drink the water. My village didn't have electricity, and my siblings and I had to start with kerosene lamp at night. 
So um, at the age of 21, I had an accident, a motorcycle accident. Uh, the rebels, for all intents and purposes, were using us as human shields. This is why I work for the World Bank. This is the difference in perspective I bring to this to the to the work in the World Bank. I'm from a developing country. I'm from such a country. I, I lived through the civil war in that country, and uh, uh, for me, this is real. With a personal history as a refugee and also as an, as an immigrant, coming to the World Bank, I really have an affinity toward, toward development. We are, we are really committed to development and whatever the price is. Development to me is, uh, is the only path I know. Very committed people at the bank. Good electricity, reliable electricity, reliable supply of clean water can really change the destiny of countries. Achievement I am proud of and that keeps inspiring me in my work is setting up a youth volunteering project from scratch in Lebanon. Trying to solve very big problems uh, of local communities. Major efforts to improve the livelihood of the Somali people. The support we provided in Haiti after the January 2010 earthquake the city was able to uh, save as much as the amount of the loan. It changed the way it provided education in slums and it really was able to save enough to invest in basic infrastructure, in health, in education. When I encounter people, poor people, beneficiaries from our projects, I feel that uh, there is some kind of easier communication between us because we understand that we are all facing difficulties, different difficulties, but uh, difficulties in our lives. If, if there was a girl out there who was like a little me struggling, but has access to education, for me that was my escape, literally and figuratively. The impact I really wanted to make was in developing countries, because I said in some senses that's where my heart is. That's who I want to help more, and that there are not enough people helping them. To me, it's a, a meeting of heart and mind. Every time I go to the field and I talk to people, beneficiaries or project participants, I, I get a, a very big sense of humbleness and also a, a lot of emotion around what's coming in the future. Because that kid slumbered it out in some refugee camp without any clothes, barely able to feed, that kid could be somebody greater tomorrow. It's the reality of me. I mean, I'm not talking about a story. I have lived that existence. That's why I work for the World Je Bank. Travaille pour la Banque mondiale. Trabajo en el Banco mondial. That's why I work for the World Bank. I work for the World Bank. Un colera World Bank. And that's why I work for the World Bank. Non World Bank Group Cover. That's why I work for the World Bank. That's why I work for the World Bank Group. Okay. I know we're about 60 people here, so I'm gonna try to make this very interactive. Any thoughts about the video? What do you think? Do you want to just type it in into the chat? What do you think about that video? What are your thoughts? Someone said very inspirational. Very inspirational. Great. Thank you. Yes, it is indeed. I have watched that video. I can't even know. I can't even, I don't know how many times I've watched it, probably hundreds of times because I do events all the time. And every time it brings tears to my eyes. It's very, very inspirational. Any other thoughts? I can see eight in the chat. Um, everyone is so passionate about working with their purpose. Yes, exactly. And that's so clear. People really passionate about development. Exactly. Everyone has a personal connection to the issues they're trying to solve seems like a very diverse set of perspectives. It shows that really believing in what you do makes a difference. It's all about people at the end of the day, a story of inclusivity. I love that. Very inspirational. The commitment to serving low-income communities is very clear. Thank you very, very much. 
those are all the kind of thoughts that we have as well for everyone that work in the World Bank. There is one thing we all share in common, and that is our passion for international development. So very quickly, I'd like to take us through the agenda of what we're going to be doing today. We will just go through very quickly what we do. I'm glad you watched the video because it gives you a sense of what we do here at the bank. And then we're going to talk about career opportunities, which is why we are here today. And then go through the World Bank Group YPP process, which has just started. We opened the application cycle, opened on Monday. And then we, I will now hand over to my colleague, BM, uh, BM, who will be talking about his journey so far. And then we can open up to Q&A. Um, how many of us know, what do, what do you think the World Bank do? Can you type that as well? What are your thoughts read the World Bank? Who are we and what do we do? What comes to your mind? And I'm going to open the chat so I can see. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Development finance, yes. Funding, exactly, great. Fund social and physical development projects in developing countries, exactly, and that summarizes it all. So you're doing your homework, you're really good students. So that's what we are all about. And the World Bank has got, who are we? We've got 189 member countries, we have staff spread across everywhere, not everywhere, about 170 countries. And we do have offices in over 130 locations. So not just DC, there are tons of offices in different locations in all the regions and, um, and even you know, fragile states. We do have visibility in all those places. When we talk about the World Bank, a lot of times people get confused. What is IFC part of the World Bank? Is IFC somewhere different? But no, the World Bank is one group, but with five different institutions. You have IBRD and IDA, which is usually referred to as World Bank, both institutions together. It's usually referred to as World Bank. And then we have IFC, MEGA, and ICSE. Now, IBRD is the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Um, IDA is... Uh, and what we do, what IBRD does is basically, and I did do is just to assist middle income countries. That's the difference. Uh, IBRD is middle income countries, IDA is low income countries. IFC, on the other hand, is focused on private sector development. So they would partner with private sector just to work uh, with, in developing countries on major or solving any development uh, challenge. I'm glad BM here is a YP from IFC. So he would have a lot of thoughts around that and what they do. Um, and then MEGA and ICSID are also, you know, part of the World Bank group with MEGA. MEGA deals with insurance and all of that. And ICSID is just, you know, settling of disputes on the, that's just the legal aspect of it. So all five institutions make up what we call the World Bank group. The World Bank group has got two, one, uh, two missions. So our mission basically is one, just to end extreme poverty uh, by reducing the share of global population that live in poverty, basically. A lot of people live in poverty less than 30%, 3%, around 3% uh, of the world. So how do we improve that? What are the kind of things that we have in place to help resolve that? And then also the second mission is to promote shared prosperity by increasing the incomes of the poorest 40% of people in every country. And that is our mission. So everything we do, uh, whether it's in terms of projects or funding, are all geared towards these two missions. What we do, I think a lot of people said development projects and you were spot on, you were right. I saw something on funding. But we also do, you know, knowledge sharing. A lot of the times the World Bank is like a source. It's like a library of knowledge, of information for most of the countries. Um, so those are the kind of things that we do. Sorry if I'm rushing through. I really need to get to the YP part because I'm looking at time now. Um, in terms of recruitment pathways, so what are the different pathways that we have? When we say pathways, what we're referring to, how can one join the World Bank group? I did see a question earlier on the age eligibility or requirement for YP. And for YP, age requirement is 32. But just in case you don't meet that criteria and you were really, really passionate about joining the World Bank, then there are other ways that you can join as well. It's not just the YP program. So I'm just going to give you a summary of each of these programs and then you know where you can fit in and you can apply accordingly. 
we do have the internship program. Now with the internship program, the cycle runs from December to January, applications would be open. So if you're looking for a summer internship program over the summer or over the spring, getting into the summer, look out for the application cycle, which would be open December, January, and you can apply. Um, JPA program, that's the Junior Professional Associate Program. Now for this program, it is, you come in as an ET, so it's not a term appointment, but the program is basically just to introduce you and give you some experience in international development. So you come in as an ET, you would work for about two years and then you need to go cool off and then you can come back into the bank on, uh, on any other type of appointment. Now the YP program, I'm gonna go deep into the YP program. We're gonna talk about that in detail on the next slide. So I'm gonna skip that over to consultancy. A lot of people come in here via consultancy opportunities. We have two tracks for consultancy opportunities. The first track is short-term consultant where you know it's a short-term work the durability, the, the timeline is between 90 to 150 days in every fiscal year, in every given year. So you cannot work more than 150 days. So it's like on a part-time basis. However, there are some people that would hire, some hiring units would hire um, consult, short-term consultants to probably work on a full-time basis, but it will only be for probably three months or six months because you cannot work more than 150 days. A lot of people come in at that, via that route to gain experience. Maybe you have one year, two year or three year experience and you just wanna build your experience and get exposure, you can come in through that route. But we also have very experienced consultants that are here and working on very top, you know, big projects. And, and that's just what they're doing. The other type of consultancy is called extended term consultancy. Now, the difference between the two is just in the timeline. Whilst one is 90 to 150 days, the other one is a full term employment Monday to Friday, but it has a limit of two, three years now. So after the third year, you would need to leave, cool off uh, for a period of time before you come back into the bank. Now for the extended term contract, it is usually posted on our website. So you would always see those opportunities out. However, for the short term, this is not posted on the career side. But if you're connected with us on LinkedIn, you will have the opportunity to see some of those opportunities when they are posted. And then lastly, we have the staff. Um, the staff opportunities where you find on the website, which are full-time term appointments that you can join the bank. Now let's talk about the YP, which is why we are here today. Um, we do have, the YP program is a joint World Bank Group program. And what we mean by that is if you join, if you're interested in the World Bank Group Young Professional Program, you can, uh, you join as it's a group program. However, there are different institutions that you would need to join. So you would either, like now there's the application cycle is open if you go to apply, you would need to select the institution of interest, what, which institution you're interested in working. So it would either be IBRD or MEGA or IFC. And there's a drop down box for you to select which of the institutions you want to work. However, it is a World Bank group program. So the curriculum and everything is done as a group. And um, the YPs are given the opportunity to rotate in the different institutions. So you could be an IBRD YP, and then maybe in your second year, you would like to work in IFC, so you can rotate and do your second year in YP. And then very quickly, um, what is it all about? So obviously these are the different things that you would benefit if you join the program. It is you would have access to a leadership development plan, um, trainings, global rotations, uh, you know, in the World Bank group. So even if all YP starts in DC every September, so for the cycle, the start date will be September, 2024. However, even if you start in DC in your first year, in your second year, there's expectation for you to rotate and work in either IFC or any other institution or any other business unit or in the field countries. So there are opportunities for you to work globally. So your first year could be in DC and your second year could be in, in Singapore or in Johannesburg or in Mexico. So there are rotation opportunities for you to work globally. There are also coaching, mentoring, networking events because you belong to a cohort. So there'll be a lot of networking events and exposure to senior leadership and exposure to very high level projects as well. YP business area. So you can see on the screen that, the, you know, with the diff three different institutions, what the subject areas, what the business areas are in terms of placement. You know, under the World Bank, so my 
advice is when you go to apply, ensure that you go through each of the business areas so that you apply correctly. I.e., if you have experience in, let's say, environmental and natural resources, do not apply for agriculture and food. The reason is it is a very, very competitive selective process. So obviously only the top candidates will be selected, will be shortlisted and would go through the process. So ensure that you read the TORs very, very well and that your skills and your experience and qualifications match each of the, any of the business areas that you're interested in before you select it. Because remember, you would have to select the business area that you're interested in and you will only be assessed based on that business area. So we're not going to move you around. So please ensure that you read it thoroughly because we do have cases where YP selected the wrong business area and then it's difficult to change. So ensure you go through the TORs, the job descriptions very well. So those are the different areas for World Bank, for IBRD. You have agriculture and food, digital development, education, energy, um, um, environmental and natural resources, finance, governance, health, nutrition. You have all of those. And I'll be happy to share this as well, Carmen. I can share this with them so that they can take the time to look at it. For IFC, you know, it's more, it's divided into product sectors and areas of expertise. So again, that's the list of, you know, business areas that are hiring into YP. Same thing with MIGA as well. So ensure that you belong to each of these categories or that you have the skills, the right skills, experience, and ensure that you go through the selection criteria so that you know what you're being assessed against, the skills you're being assessed against, and ensure that you have that in as well before you apply or click on the business area that you are interested in. Eligibility criteria to be considered. Um, I did state earlier that the age requirement for YP is 32, um, as uh, you have to be 32 by, I think, September 30th. So meaning you have to be born on or after October the 1st, 1991. That means even if you were born on maybe September 30th, 1991, you do not qualify. Yes, we just had to have a cutoff so that there are no waivers because who do you accept, who do you not accept? So there's a waiver for, there's no waiver for that. That is the criteria. You must be born on or after October 1st, 1991 to be eligible in terms of the age requirements. Remember, it is a young professional program as well. You have to have a graduate level education, you know, and whether a master or MBA or equivalent, MS, LLM, you know, JD or PhD, those are all requirements. Uh, educational requirements, you can have either or. Uh, you have to be specialized in one of those business areas, like I stated before, ensure that you specialize in one of those areas for you to have a competitive advantage over other applicants. And you have to be very fluent in English as well. Additional consideration, obviously, is a display of passion for international development. Everyone would have the opportunity to write a strong essay. So please take that essay very seriously. I have seen candidates with great resumes that would have made it through because they have fantastic experience, but they did not take the ACES seriously. And um, so they just, you know, slapped in a few lines and then that was it. So ensure that you take your ACES very seriously. There are, you know, the question is very specific and there are guidelines on how to answer the question. So ensure that you answer that very well. And then ensure that, you know, it also, you know, anyone reading it can feel and see that you have a passion for international development. It has to be your motivation. So ensure you put it all in there. Um, outstanding academic credentials, obviously, exhibit excellent client engagement. I mean, uh, overall, as a YP, and you'll be hearing from BM very soon, um, you would be working on very high level, big projects. So client engagement, communication, and team leadership skills is very, very important. And you have to have that. You have to demonstrate knowledge of the relevant sector as well. So let's say you're interested in health you need to demonstrate knowledge of that sector and the trends. So there's always a difference between two. The difference between two candidates is always where one displays the knowledge of that sector, but without the current trends, but the other one displays the knowledge of the sector, including the trends, that person would definitely have a competitive advantage over the other person, even if the other person also demonstrated knowledge. So ensure that the two go hand in hand, as you demonstrate your knowledge of that sector, that you also um, display or you know demonstrate the trends, you know current trends. What are the current trends? If you need to read about it, you know go to a website, look at uh, the health sector, 
uh, page, see what we're currently doing in different countries. And if you want to write about that or give an instance or examples, I think that would be great. It just gives you a competitive advantage. The following is a plus work experience in emerging markets or developing countries. That is a huge plus because all our work is in developing countries. So that would be a huge plus. However, does that mean that if you do not have experience in emerging markets or developing countries that you would not make the shortlist? Absolutely not. It is just a plus, but it is not mandatory. Full fluency in one of the following languages is key. Yes, but please know a lot of people that come in do not speak any of these languages. It is a plus. It is not mandatory. So do not say, oh, I tick all the boxes apart from language. I only speak English. I do not speak any additional World Bank language. No, please also apply because I mean, I speak only English. I don't speak any other language and I'm here. Um, it is a plus, it's an advantage, but it's not mandatory. Eligibility requirement by institution. Obviously, since even if it's a World Bank group, um, program, each of the institutions have got their requirements. So it's good for you to also know if you're interested in the bank, in the World Bank, IBRD, you need to have, you know, public sector operations, relevant masters by September 2023, meaning you have to be graduating from your master's degree by this September or PhD by September 2024. Remember the start date is September 2024. Um, you have to have three plus years of relevant professional experience or continue doctoral study. But for MEGA, it is different. So for MEGA, political risk insurance, MBA, or any other relevant masters before September 2023, and three plus years of relevant experience as well. Now for IFC, the huge difference is the four years. So whilst IBRD and MEGA would go with anyone with three minimum of three years experience, IFC's minimum years of experience is four years and not three. So if you have three years experience minimum, do consider the World Bank or MEGA instead of IFC, as you may not be shortlisted. For IFC, obviously investments as well as upstream profiles, um, and then MBA or master's degree before September 2024. So again, that's another differentiator. Whilst the bank and, and MEGA, you need to have your master's degree by September this year for IFC, you can have your master's degree either in September this year or, but you must have it at least by September 2024, which is next month. So just note the differentiators so that you apply accordingly to the right institution. How do you apply? So the cycle is open, like I said, from Monday the 3rd. Applications are open for all the institutions. Like I said, when you log in, you would click on the drop down box and select any of the institution, any institution of your choice, whether it's World Bank, IFC, or MEGA. And this is from July the 3rd to July 31st, to July 31st. However, IFC would open another cycle in August, right? So if you're interested in IFC, you can apply now because you can also click and select IFC and apply now. That's totally fine. However, if you want to take time to work on your ASA or something or, uh, or whatever, you can wait and apply in August to September. But that doesn't mean that you can't apply now. You can also apply now because as applications come in, we are reviewing and moving and, pro and you know moving people to the next stages. July to August, applicants screen for minimum eligibility requirement. So the team, my team, the HR team, the recruitment team would go through all applications and screen candidates mainly on the minimum eligibility requirement. From September to October, we have technical review of applicants of the long list for a short list. Now at that stage, the business leaders would be handling that by themselves. You know, we are the technically review all applicants including your video interview, um, because you would be asked to do a higher view interview as well. So they would review all of that and then have a short list. And this is between September and October. And then by November, January would be assessment and interview. So if you are shortlisted, you will hear from the team sometime in October regarding your interview and the travel arrangement. Uh, because the interviews will face to face, so it will be different locations. So depending where you are, you would receive an email, reallocation and then travel plans will kickstart and will be put in place just in case you need a visa to go to the particular country or whatever. All of that, the team would work on it in October in preparation for the interviews in November, December and January. 
Uh, we intend to send out offers by January, February. So if you are successful, you will get an offer by then. And if you are not, you would also get an email explaining why. And we would usually provide feedback for candidates that were interviewed, but did not make it at real request. So if you would like feedback, we would do that. And then the new cohort will start September, 2024. Um, and that's just the application checklist. You know, your resume has to be prepared. Academic credentials has to be ready to be attached. Your short essay needs to be attached as well. Short summary of your thesis or dissertation and then three professional or academic recommendation. Please ensure that this comes in on time. There's always a deadline. And without those recommendations, we cannot proceed or move you to the next level. Um, so please ensure that you have your recommendations come in quite early before or on the deadline, but not after the deadline. As by then, people that, you know, all the packages that are ready would have been submitted for technical review and you would be missed out of that stage. So please ensure that that is sent to us on time. Okay, so applications are open. Please apply, but now, and I think I'm gonna hand over to my colleague who would be able to talk to us about his YB experience. BM, or let me just pause here for questions. Any question first before BM can come in? Mabel, we have several questions about some of the technical details. Okay. Um, in particular, when you talk about having your master's degree yep. before that date, if you've had it, so what's the difference between having it by September 23rd or have, 2023 or having it before September 2023? If you've had it before, that's totally fine. It's just that the deadline for your master's degree should be September, 2023. If it's MEGA or IBRD, for IFC is the same thing. If you had it a year before or two years before and you've been working, it's totally okay. But the deadline is that September, 2023. And so if some, a student is graduating in May of 2024, they should look to next cycle for some opportunities and this cycle for- Yeah, others. so if you're graduating next year, then, you should look at either you apply to IFC or if you want to apply to the bank, then you should look forward to, yeah, to the, okay. yeah, yeah, to the next um, slide. A few more. And then um, we have two wonderful YPPs that I want to hear from Huda and BM. So I just wanted to get through these very quickly. You noted that there's a thesis dissertation summary requirement. If students did not create a thesis or a dissertation, do they still have to demonstrate that piece in some other way? Actually, I don't think so. Um, let me confirm and come and I can send that to you. Okay. Uh, let me not give a wrong information here. And um, on the question of references and recommendations, do they just provide names and contact information yes. or do they need full yes. letters? Yes, they just provide the names and contact letters and then they would send that to us. Okay. And one last one, uh, thank you for your patience. If students have been working in short-term consultancies before this, are they eligible to apply for YPP? Yes, they are. Okay. And the I think people not questions. eligible Ooh. is if Please. you are staff already. But if you're not a staff, if you're ST or consultant, yes, you're eligible to apply. Okay. And I do see the other questions, but I want to hear from our alum as they may answer some of those pieces. So BM and Huda, please. Um, All right. Okay. Over to you, Bimming. Oh, I, I didn't know Huda had joined. Hi, Huda. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mabel. Um, yes, I already did my introduction, so let me go straight to sharing about the YP program, my current work, and a few tips for success in the application process. So first, about the YP program. Um, I think the benefits of the YP program was more, a lot more than I imagined. For me, uh, the biggest benefit was a very supportive core experience. After merging the YP program into one, we have a more diverse cohort from the three institutions, the World Bank, IFC, and MEGA. We really got close to each other after going through all the training programs and helped each other on settling in, getting to know more about the works being done at our respective units, and so on. This getting to know about like indirectly knowing what others do in their respective units is a huge plus. For example, if you're doing business, you always have to contact your colleagues working in different units and see how you can coordinate and cooperate to make the project going on. So I think this is a huge plus getting strong support from your cohorts. 
Furthermore, during the two-year program, we get, the, we get the chance to experience two to three different units, which I believe is a huge advantage. For example, um, I'll be joining MIGA for my second rotation starting this September, and I'm very excited to learn more about their products and also seek for new business opportunities, which can be done together with the World Bank and IFC. Going, moving on to explain a little bit about my work, um, I'm currently working as a associate investment officer and in the public private partnership unit. Um, we usually work as an advisor to the clients, which are mostly governments and public uh, institutions. We identify critical infrastructure needs, such as power plants, hospitals, airports, et cetera, and structure those deals satisfactory to both our clients and private investors. I personally believe that this PPP is a great way to attract private investment, which is critical to close the financing gap, which is very prevalent in emerging countries. A lot of countries do not have strong regulation or and or the environment conducive to attract private investments. And this is a huge impediment to realizing the infrastructure potentials in a lot of countries. We work together with the World Bank and MIGA to structure transactions so that private investors can leverage their experience in building, financing, operating, and maintaining critical infrastructures, which is difficult for the public sector to do by themselves. Lastly, um, two quick tips for a successful application and interview. Uh, first, I would, I would strongly recommend to be familiar with what the World Bank, IFC, and MIGA does. Scrutinize the website, read annual reports, learn what the mission of World Bank is, and think how this connects to your ex expertise and how you could add value to achieve those missions. For IFC applicants, um, I recall there was an exam that tests your knowledge in finance, accounting, modeling, and your understanding of IFC's work. So please study on those technical parts too. Um, Reiterating what Mabel already explained, kindly be noted the applications open from July 3rd to 31st for all profiles, and it will reopen again on August 15th to September 30 for IFC profiles. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'll pass the floor to my colleague, Huda. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Huda Karafi. I'm a young professional working at the World Bank. So as we mentioned earlier, being IDRD and IDA, and I work for the energy unit on the South Asia region. Uh, I'm currently based in Washington, D.C., and I joined the YPP in 2021. Maybe a, a little bit uh, uh, about my background. Prior to joining the World Bank, I had held full, two full-time professional positions. I had worked for two years on financial partnerships at the Bilateral Donor of France, that is the French Development Agency. And prior to that, I had worked for three years for a private sovereign advisory firm, specializing in sub-Saharan African sovereign financing challenges. In terms of academic background, I went to Sciences Po Paris, like some of you today, from which I hold a BA in law and a master in economic policy. Personally, I decided to join the YPP because of the comprehensive track it provides. So there's a good balance between training and on the job experience, unlike uh, an STC, so short-term consultant uh, track, for example. More, uh, Generally, I relate particularly to the elements shared in the video uh, because I'm a citizen of Morocco and I wanted to have a, more of a concrete and direct impact and give back to the country and region that I belong to. Um, mm -hmm. And also on a more personal level, I see a few, uh, a few questions in the chat regarding the, um, the possibility to apply when you just graduated or uh, um, basically on, on the amount of professional experience you need. On my hand, I chose the YPP because it was a program that seemed to actually value my professional experience without negatively labeling the word young. So in my case, when I applied, I was 26. Um, but I had already, uh, already accumulated five years of full-time professional experience, and I was treated as such, as someone who had actually uh, um, uh, worked in the past and, and was valued as such. Now, maybe as part of today's conversation, let me uh, do as my colleague did and uh, share with you a few, uh, a few points on my experience in the program, my current work, and a few tips for, uh, for hopefully success in the application process. So as, uh, as we saw earlier in the presentation, the World Bank's goal is to reduce poverty 
and boost shared pro uh, prosperity in a livable planet. So my unit, as we call it also my global practice, that is energy, acts to uh, help achieve this goal by ensuring that on the one hand, we have energy access as a vector for growth and reduced poverty. So access to fuel, access to electricity, but also access to clean and efficient energy to help contribute emissions reduction uh, and uh, uh, achieve this goal of living uh, in a livable planet. Uh, on uh, the other hand, um, maybe I wanted to, to be a little bit more specific on what I do uh, uh, in my day-to-day -day job. Right now, I'm working on a fossil fuel um, subsidy uh, reform, or in other ways, how can we ensure that um, basically stopping uh, a support towards uh, uh, fossil fuels uh, would not impact the, the poorest segments of the society as well as of economies. So to give you a very concrete uh, way of how we do that, we would um, engage in technical assistance with countries to, uh, to move forward uh, with this kind of reform. Now, if I talk more uh, specifically about the benefits of joining the YPP, um, Again, we, we saw a few, uh, a few elements in the presentation shared, but on my end, I think it provides you with an unvaluable network, be it intra-program. So uh, as uh, Yumin mentioned, uh, we get to know uh, a cohort experience like no other inside the bank, since each cohort is a, a uh, approximately 40 um, colleagues. But it, it's also an unvaluable network outside of the program because colleagues uh, at the bank will always welcome uh, YPP with great enthusiasm. So this is really a, um, a particularly uh, appreciated asset. It's also a program that is comprehensive at many levels. So first of all, technically, uh, it's a program that is designed to allow you to touch a little bit at everything alongside the value chain at the bank. So throughout the project cycle, but also in terms of um, um, sector, so I saw a question in the chat asking if I am interested uh, in another area of expertise at the bank besides the one that I'm applying for, is it possible for me to work on that? Absolutely, and it's actually my case currently, because as mentioned during the presentation, uh, there is a concept called rotation, whereby the program uh, allows you to rotate to another sector. So currently, I'm, uh, although I'm uh, supposed to be in the energy sector, I'm currently working in the macroeconomics uh, global practice. So this allows me to have a, a broader view. It's also comprehensive at the geographical level because the program uh, allows you to uh, do on-site rotations in another country. And institutionally, it's also designed to allow you to see other parts of the bank. So do a rotation in IFC if you're interested more in private sector guarantees and so on. Uh, now, a few tips maybe for a successful application and interview process. Uh, maybe before jumping on the interview process, I, I saw a, question, a few questions on letters. My tip is to really choose uh, um, people who know you, who have worked with you, rather than choose um, bright names or shiny names. This was one of my biggest fears that uh, I did not have access to, I don't know, the head of a UN department or something like this. But instead, I, I simply chose the, the closest people I had worked with and their letters ended up reflecting the, the quality of the work and collaboration we've had. Uh, and this was uh, uh, an invaluable uh, asset to my uh, application. A second tip, uh, you'll hear about the T-shaped profile. So uh, the verdict, uh, basically the idea is that you should have on the one hand, a deep knowledge of one sector, uh, that would be the vertical bar uh, of, um, uh, of your profile. And on the other hand, you would be able to uh, have a broader knowledge that expands uh, your area of expertise. This would be the horizontal bar of the T. Now, of course, it is crucial and the minimum uh, to uh, know your field of specialization, but it's good to know the road, but it's also better to know how to drive in unknown routes. So I would make sure to consolidate the reasoning patterns to be able to respond to questions and create logical connection between topics that may seem outside of your comfort zone. So if you're a health specialist and on the D-Day of the interview, you end up having a, a question on climate change, make, even though it's not your area of expertise, make sure to create links with your own area of expertise to show that you have a comprehensive uh, and robust pattern of thinking. And last but not least, attitude is aptitude to uh, share a kind of a basic uh, um, 
uh, quote, the idea is that you will also have a group interview and in, in that group interview, but as well uh, in your professional life in general, the work that you deliver is as important as the way you deliver it. So ensure to get the best out of yourself on the day of the interview, but also ensure to get the best out of your team and teammates. So this uh, is a, a tip I think that will accompany my um, throughout my uh, professional journey, but I, I wanted to, to share it with you. So let me stop here. Uh, I'm thrilled to encourage you to apply to the program uh, as applications are, apply, are open, I believe, uh, from July 3rd to July 31st for all profile. Uh, and I believe they reopen on August 15th for IFC profiles. Uh, please feel free to share your questions either during the Q&A or reach out to me after the, the event. And uh, with that, I hand over the microphone to, uh, to my colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Huda. That was really, really interesting and it's good to know. I think we still have four minutes, so I'm happy for, you know, more questions. If you have any more questions, please feel free to either send it via the chat or unmute yourself and ask Huda and BM are still here and they'll be happy to take your questions. So go ahead. Mabel, we have one in the chat wondering about how many YPP are approved each year and if there's a set number of positions or if it's driven by other factors? Uh, very good question. Um, so usually, I mean, I can't really give a number, but I will say on an average World Bank group, 50 on an average a year, uh, but more YPs are picked at the bank than IFC. I think IFC is an average of about maybe 15, uh, but the bank is an average of 35 to 40. Uh, and meager is usually just, you know, average of two or three. So it depends per year uh, based on business needs and workforce plans and all of that. But at an average is about 50 a year, woman group. Another question about how applicants can calculate the required number of years of work experience. Does part-time work count or is it, do internships count? How do you come to calculate that three years of work requirement? Uh, when we're doing the review, yes. If you had done an internship a year or two somewhere, yes, that counts as, you know, it, it adds up towards your years of experience. So it's not just, um, you know, a real full-time job that does not have um, any time limit to it. So if you had an internship, you know, three months here, six months there, four months there, it all adds up to your years of experience. And also a question for BM and, and Huda. Mary, Mabel made it clear that things like passion should be demonstrated as well as customer service and teamwork. Briefly, could you each give us an example of how you showcased those skills without simply saying, I work well in a team? Um, could you give us your, if you had uh, your examples? Uh, maybe I'll, sure. I'll take this one. Um, sure. Sorry, it will be very quick. Basically, during the, the interview process, as I mentioned, there will be two interviews, uh, at least if the process has not changed. Uh, during the group interview, you will have, uh, by design, uh, to, to be a team player, and um, uh, the question will be as such that you will have to work as a team, otherwise you will not be able to make it. Uh, and during the panel interview and throughout your uh, um, uh, interview process, Giving it a more personal touch uh, will allow you to basically move away from the, the standard, uh, as Carmen mentioned, uh, demonstrative sentence. So I like to work as a team. Basically, there will be uh, thousands of, uh, of other applicants. So giving very specific examples of uh, how in a project, in your professional experience or academic experience, you were so passionate about the topic that you have done uh, this kind of work or delivered this type of output might help give it a more concrete example. So being output oriented, example oriented, uh, will be something that may help you uh, move away from the, uh, from the mass. That's it on my end. Yes, I joined Huda. Um, I think adding your personal touch and giving a specific example on your team or experience would be very good. Or personally, um, I, I like to explain about 
a time when I had difficulty in actually working with some of the colleagues. What was the situation? How did you cope with it? How did you resolve those complications and so on? That would also demonstrate how you could be a great team player and how you could demonstrate your ability to resolve any conflicts if there should be any. That is all great advice. Um, we are almost at time. Um, I'm seeing some questions that I think we've had a chance to address. So I wanna thank all of our speakers, especially our young professionals for sharing their personal experience with us. To our students, the recording will be available shortly. And if we're able to share the slides themselves, I will get those out to you. And I know that your career offices have lots of experience counseling students through the process. So please be sure you talk to them as well as you prepare your application. Thanks so much to our bank colleagues and to all of you for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you at the next APSIA webinar. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.